the industry has never established a standard or a baseline to compare muzzle brakes against. So other than the question of how would the industry even decide on how to come up with such a standard, the question is, how do we measure performance and decide how efficient muzzle brakes are? And at the same time, how do the industry's top performers stack up against each other? Well, the most cost effective and simplest way to date has been with a sliding recoil sled, which essentially measures the thrust generated from firing the rifle. Determining which muzzle brake performs the best is relatively simple. Look for which travels the shortest distance on the sled when compared to the distance when fired without a muzzle brake. More complex methods using sensors have been used to generate more focused data, like the actual peak force generated and how much the muzzle brake reduces it by, to how quickly the rifle accelerates and for how long, which is the best way to gather data when developing a muzzle brake. But if your goal is simply to determine which muzzle brake performs the best out of a pool of devices, then a sliding recoil sled is perfectly sufficient and is what we'll be using today for observing the market's top performers. But before we get to the test, what is it that makes a muzzle brake efficient? What should customers be looking for in a muzzle brake when they want the most recoil reduction possible and why? Well, whether the top manufacturers of muzzle brakes admit it or not, they all either directly or indirectly reference through their designs the work the US Army did around 50 odd years ago on muzzle brakes. Several papers were written on the topic at the time that have all now been declassified and can be referenced online. These papers detailed the geometry and formulas for a theoretically perfect muzzle brake, which surprisingly can only reduce the recoil generated by firing a rifle by 80%. So before you even begin designing a muzzle brake, you're already fighting an uphill battle. And every percent of performance you give up during the design process puts you further and further away from that theoretical best case scenario. It's due to this that reduced concussion designs and much simpler designs just can't compete with more complex designs that concentrate on the important factors highlighted in these research papers. Unfortunately, we are faced with compromises and further distance from that 80% target because of the complexity of the geometry that's required to achieve it. Modern CNC lathes are just not able to fabricate this geometry by cutting these internal features from the outside. So it becomes even more important to focus on the features that we can replicate and emphasize them to retain as much efficiency as possible. The focus of an efficient muzzle brake is nozzles and gas deflection, to use all of the limited amount of gas exiting the muzzle as efficiently as possible without allowing it to escape down the bore in order to counter the thrust generated from firing the rifle. The first port is the most important as it does 66% of the work. It needs a nozzle cut into the opening of the bore at an angle no greater than 30 degrees to allow the gas to accelerate and expand. It needs sharp and deep V-like geometry in line with the bore to deflect the gas both left and right of the bore to stop it escaping down the bore and into the next port. It then needs deep V-like pockets to catch the gas like a sail and impart forward force onto. These pockets need to be cut from the outside by a forward facing curve to concentrate the gas and pressure into a central point, increasing pressure and these forward facing curves need to be angled rearward at 45 degrees to then evacuate the gas. As the gas moves from one port to another, pressure drops. And ideally, the ports need to shrink in size and their geometry needs to adapt to effectively manage these changes. Which means, unfortunately, it's not a matter of bigger and more always equals better. You quickly come to a point of diminishing returns with port size and number of ports and a more appropriately sized and designed muzzle brake will always outperform one that simply tries to gain performance by adding more and or larger ports. To put things into perspective, the second port only does 22% of the work, the third 7%, the fourth 3%, and the fifth around 2%. So five port designs don't offer any meaningful advantage over an efficient four or even three port muzzle brake.
For the testing of the muzzle brakes, we will fire three shots on the recoil sled with no muzzle brake to set a baseline. Then we'll fire three shots with each muzzle brake and calculate and compare the averages. The muzzle brake that travels the shortest distance will win. We'll be firing three shots for each data point to accommodate differences in muzzle velocity and factors like wind. The muzzle brakes we have for testing are the Area 419 Sidewinder, a large four port muzzle brake with asymmetric ports that fight felt recoil and muzzle rise and is very popular for its excellent tapered mounting system. The MPA bolt action muzzle brake, which is the simplest muzzle brake of the bunch. And although it has four large but compact ports that only fight felt recoil, it has the largest focus on gas deflection. The APA Little Bastard Gen 3, a smaller four port design that has separate tunable vertical ports to reduce muzzle rise and is very popular for the performance it offers in such a lightweight and compact design. The Terminator TT muzzle brake, a five port muzzle brake that only fights felt recoil with similar sized and similar shaped ports to the Little Bastard, but is very compact in length for a five port design. And of course, the without warning TMB, which is the most complex muzzle brake of the test, a large, long four port muzzle brake with asymmetric ports that fight muzzle rise and felt recoil. It is the only muzzle brake that utilizes nozzles and has a strong emphasis on gas deflection. It also has a built-in harmonic barrel tuner. So, not surprisingly, the TMB, which is the most complex muzzle brake of the group, reduced the thrust generated from firing the rifle the most. Due to its superior efficiency from its focus on nozzles and gas deflection, it just creates a more efficient muzzle brake that uses more of the gas coming out of the muzzle without allowing it to escape down the bore, and thus imparting more forward force to counter the rearward thrust from firing the rifle. This trend continued with second and third place with the MPA bolt action muzzle brake, which had the strongest focus on gas deflection out of the other bunch of muzzle brakes. And for that reason, it came in second place. In the next test, we will cover how the top muzzle brakes handle muzzle rise and staying on target. What it looks like to the shooter through the scope to use each one and how this relates to modern precision rifle competition and what the benefits are to a fundamentally sound competitor on the clock.